Good afternoon. Um, English again. My name is John Clark, and I am privileged to be here today and to celebrate the life and work of a great man, uh, a giant in his field, a renowned educator, but more especially a personal friend for about 20 years. When I first met Russ in around 1990, the name rang a bell, and though I'd been at Imperial College doing a master's in OR, it was a decade before Russ penned the future of OR is past. <laughs> I, I never really did like it anyway, so I thought this was so good. I, I wasted a couple of years of it. So. At this point, I was working in corporate planning on the wrong side of a multi-billion dollar acquisition in Canada, uh, uh, where the winner was the Canadian sub of Exxon. And I was charged with identifying best practices for the corporate planning function during the sensitive, I think sensitive is a uh, the descriptive word, transition period. So anyway, I welcomed the opportunity to travel the world, to uh, basically North America and Britain, interviewing companies such as ICI, unearthing shells, formative scenario planning, and a wonderful visit to California, to the uh, Apple University, where I was met by a young man in chinos whose title was All Around Good Guy. <laughs> it's good, huh? Exxon and uh, an All Around Good Guy. And that is when I met Russ. Today, a younger person might recall the meeting prefaced by, Oh my God. But by this time, I had met so many consultants, gurus, their acolytes, and any numbers of purveyors of rigidly prescriptive methodologies which could lead companies out of the moribund past <coughs> and into a clearly recognizable better future. If only one could remember the 11 things you had to do every day inside a president. Then there was Russ. He had the cojones to tell the executive management of Exxon that their biggest failing was believing their own press. <laughs> His pithy one-liners were legion and crushed and absolutely crushed Western School's analytic management, which for the most part couldn't comprehend synthetic thinking. And the business schools which were focused on teaching and not learning. There is a difference, I'll come back to it. Here's a few of the one-liners I can remember. There is often more competition within the organization than between organizations. <laughs> I am not a consultant, I'm an educator. We only learn by doing something wrong and then finding out how to correct it. Management and planners are locked into doing the wrong things right. And schools should teach, primarily business schools, but schools should teach how to learn and should be continuously learning themselves how to be able to do that. Russ's company, Interact, was created under the architecture of idealized design, and its basis was synthetic thinking for organizations where the whole is examined through the interaction of the independent parts. Uh, lately, the term holistic has spread uh, to describe just about everything from environmentalism to personal wellness, but the whole in holistic for Interact was really what was striven for with respect to organizations. Some businesses got it, many did, Exxon included. Russ left shortly before I left. Uh, some may ask why he wasn't more widely recognized outside of academia. He consulted with some very, very large companies and did great things for them. Why wasn't he lauded when, you know, compared to many lesser lights in the field of expertise? I suggest that it's because his work was not easy. It offers no quick fixes. Solving small problems is no solution to helping the whole. Implementation of Russia's doctrines is bloody hard. Hard work is needed to understand the idealization and then even more for its implementation. He was blunt. He didn't tolerate fools like me. He was dismayed with political interference in democracies. He dismissed the cult of gurus. And above all else, he wanted to make a difference to a world he informed with his courage, intelligence, and humanitarianism. What an orator. I could listen to Russ for hours, even when I'd heard the same presentation several times before. He was hugely intelligent, hugely intelligent. Broad as well as deep, 
but with a comic sense which revealed itself in many passages in the corporate brain death. A ritualistic ceremony designed to appeal to or appease the gods with unpredictable outcomes, but when it's once successful justifies the repetition ad infinitum. Doing the wrong things right again and again. Russ, you're no longer with us, but your legacy will endure and hopefully will be a beacon for idealized design for generations to come. You've been a major influence in and on my life, and your independent thinking on organizations and social entities has learned me much more than teach me. Thank you.